Thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Let's start back at 1998 Little League Championship. Yep. What was that experience like? It was unbelievable. Um, you know, did I really think we could do it? Probably not. We had some lucky games, lucky breaks, lucky opportunities, but that's baseball in a nutshell. And um, eventually we won. It was, it was so cool. What do you remember the most about that championship game? Oh, what do I remember most? I remember leading off with the home run. Um, I remember being real nervous. And I remember looking outside the stadium and seeing just how many people were there. I think it was close to 50,000 people came to watch two 12-year-old teams, 11 and 12-year-old teams. I thought that was fascinating. And I remember just getting on the mound in the sixth inning, coming in and trying to close the game. And I just looked up and I'm like, oh my God, it just this is, this is baseball. I want to do this for the rest of my life. And we won the game. It was, it was, so, it was so unique. Wow. And you went four for four and were the winning pitcher and made the final out. Yeah, it was a uh, storybook kind of for a little leaguer. I, I, you know, I was, they call it, you know, everybody's numbered in little league. You know, you got your fastest, the slowest guy. You got your number one, two, and three. I was a number three pitcher. They wanted me to play defense at short most of the time. And I came in on the mound and lo and behold, got, I actually got the win too, because we gave up a run before that brought me in. And uh, not many people could say that too. I got a victory in, uh, in the little league world series championship game. Not many people can say a lot of things that I think you've accomplished in your career. Mm. Um, but after that championship, when you look back on that time getting to the bigs, yeah. what would you say is the greatest lesson that you learned in that time? Uh, understanding failure. Um, I have the quote I always talk about. I said, you can always accept failure, but never expect failure. And mm. I think if you hear really what I'm saying is, one, you're gonna fail. Don't ever expect to fail but accept it because baseball is a game of failure and it's going to happen with bases loaded, nobody out, you're going to strike out, you're going to pop up to the pitcher and be pissed. Oh, yeah, it's going to happen. I'm going to be mad too, but you know, I can accept it because it's going to happen, but I'm never going to expect it. With such a decorated career, you've stayed in Tom's River. We're sitting here in your facility. Yeah. How special is this place to you? Uh, very special. Um, growing up with my two older brothers and family, my parents made it special. They, they figured out, they'll listen, go outside, go have fun. This, there's a park mm -hmm. down the street, it's called Skyview Park. We used to go all the time and where I hit my first home run, where I made my first basket. Um, we used to play turkey football over there for Thanksgiving and that's the best part of it. Now you also are very dedicated to giving back to the community. You're a game changer in that you yes. invest in the place that you are and it's important to you. Why is it so important to give back? I just feel, you know, as much as I can give back, um, you know, whether it's, you know, feeding the hungry or, you know, the field of dreams with Christian Kane, with his son and having opportunities to help is pretty neat to me and, and puts a smile on my face. And I know it does on theirs and makes the world a better place. So um, my wife and I have been blessed and, you know, why not give back and um, help others out along the way? Tell me a little bit more about the field dreams and what that is to the community. You know, it's for special needs, uh, um, children and adults of any ages. Uh, there's a monster playground for these kids. You should see the contraptions they made. Like, it's better than most playgrounds I've been a part of. <laughs> the, um, they got um, food. Uh, the whole floor is made so they can ride on it for, for children that can't get out of a wheelchair or whatever it is. Um, there's a huge baseball field. It's going to be monstrous. It's going to look like a major league field for kids to play on. And there's just so much more. And I really can't wait to dive in and uh, see the smiles on these kids' faces. So Christian Kane, long story short, um, had an accident. And, um, his son, you know, unfortunately got the brunt of all of it and he can't walk anymore. So he decided to figure something out for his kid to be a, you know, a major leaguer per se. And, uh, and uh, he did a heck of a job and his family has been close to mine and we've been, we've been working together and he's been doing tireless hours and uh, it's a great opportunity for, for these kids to come in through not only New Jersey, but you know, the tri-state area and everywhere else if they can get here. Wow. Now, we talked a little about how you're a game changer. Yes. What does it mean to you to be a game changer? What is a game changer to yeah, you? Yeah, a game changer to me is somebody who helps for one, is a, is a person who's always there for <clears throat> your next teammate, your family, uh, a friend, whatever it is, you know, that's besides sports. Now a game changer in sports is a person who comes in and, you know, dictates the game. It's mm -hmm. like, all right, 
this guy's coming up. We've got to figure out a plan for him. Uh, this is going to change the game. And at the end of the day, I always try doing that. And I want them to think at the end, man, you know, the team was good. But how about, how about that kid, Todd Frazier, man? That kid basically was the game changer of the day. And I think, I think all kids should think like that. And there's no cockiness about it. It's an opportunity. When you get the opportunity, yeah, I want them to think, oh, when we play that team next time, this is the guy we got to worry about. Todd, when you talk about game changers that you've come across in your career, do any coaches in particular stand out? Yeah, really good question because there's been a ton. I mean, the first one I think of is my high school coach, Ken Frank. Um, he would love the Game Changers app. It would make his life a lot easier. <laughs> but um, like I said, he wants the best out of you. He's going to get on your hiney. He's going to tell you, listen, you're not playing good today. Get your butt going. And he would, he would definitely enjoy something like this. That's the first guy I think of. And then I think of all my hitting coaches, um, Ryan Jackson in AA, um, you know, Chili Davis with the Mets. Um, you know, those are the biggest game changers for me at the end of the day. If I didn't have those coaches uh, behind my side and working, just saying, you know, listen, you're good again, but keep going, keep going, keep going. And uh, uh, boundless opportunities that they've given me and um, the focus they've had for me, there's nothing, I don't know what else I can do to give back to them, but keep saying thank you.